questions. Ooh, wow, good question. I don't know what you're talking about, girl, you crazy. Yeah, I don't know how to answer that. Oh wow, you really asked that? Is Nicolas Cage your hall pass guy? Hello? What do they say on E! True Hollywood Story? You think you know, but you have no idea. This is the E! True Hollywood Story of Kimberly Wisk. Maybe a little bit more dramatic on the TV show. Maybe less, who knows? I haven't seen it in years because I haven't had cable in years. Slash, I haven't been able to watch a show in years. We recently canceled Hulu because I hadn't watched anything in I'm like, no one opens Hulu. I used to watch Grey's Anatomy. I used to watch, I don't know, a couple of shows, you know, AGT. And we just don't. I'm like, why are we, like, Hulu subscriptions are up there. YouTube Red subscriptions, like, every couple of months they're bumping it up. I'm like, can we relax on this? The CEOs are literally billionaires. Why are they nickel and diming us? Like, oh, let's just charge them a couple more dollars. You're a billionaire. Give us a break. <clears throat> that was not a question, but more of a rant. This is a Q&A style video. I haven't done one of these in well over a year. I feel like the last one I did was when Wolfgang was a teeny tiny little tot and I literally could only film 10 minutes at a time. Sometimes I feel weird like asking questions, like do you guys even want me? Do you have any questions? Like opening it up to read them, I just feel like they're gonna be questions like, why are you so dumb? Why are you an idiot? Surprisingly, which I shouldn't be surprised, you guys are all so nice. So I'm gonna answer as many questions as I can. We're gonna start real heavy, okay? What products do you use in your hair? It always looks so shiny. <laughs> I'm answering this first because it makes me laugh. You guys, I blow dried my hair for the first time today. I maybe do this once a year, maybe. I'm not sure I did it at all last year. And a couple things I wanna say about this. Maybe three, I'll probably forget one. I might even forget the second one. And now I've forgotten all of them. What was I going to say? I really don't know. One, I took a shower this morning. I know, thank you very much. I didn't wanna look like a wet rat, so I blow dried my hair. Two, I think healthy hair, like who the, what does that even mean? Starts from the inside out. People say like drink a lot of water, take your vitamins, all that stuff. I love to stay hydrated, but honestly, I think what it comes down to is DNA. Like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like one, my hair is long, so people have a different perception of it. I don't know, I feel like whenever it's long, I always get compliments on it. But also my hair, like 98% of my life is up in a bun or a clip. So then I have the discussion, do I wanna cut it? Should I cut it? I have cut it several times in the past. Like I'm talking up to my chin just because I'm over it. I hate the grow out process and I do enjoy it long. I just am in the season of my life where like if I wear it long, my kids are gonna yank on it. Or like I put them on my hip and they're like sitting on it, you know? I think eventually I'll wear it down more often. Uh, but as far as products, like I, shampoo, conditioner, literally that's it. I have nothing for you. I think it truly just comes down to DNA. I ask questions on my YouTube community tab and on Instagram. So this one is the most liked right now on my YouTube community tab. And it reads, what are some of your best secrets for a happy marriage? Y'all seem so happy with each other and with your family. I love watching. First of all, thank you so much. I love that you are hanging out with me. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you all for being a friend. Best secrets. That's funny. I don't think there are any secrets. You just don't give up. Alex and I have been married for 17 years. I say that with a question mark. He always adds a year. It's always really confusing for me. This year in December, we'll have been married 17 years. And there have definitely, like we've been highs and lows, a lot of lows. We got married young, we grew up with each other. I think we've learned how to, you know, be married to each other and compliment each other, especially when it comes to parenting. We have a lot of kids, we have five kids and their ages range, they say, listen, they say the hardest part of a marriage is when you have a baby and it's their ages zero to three. Like the first three years of a child's life really challenges the marriage because the babies are demanding and toddlers are demanding and they're in constant need of your attention. And it does put a strain on a marriage. And I uh, just wanna do the math here a little bit. We have had a child ages zero to three for 13 years. So Alex and I are very much looking forward to in a couple of years when Wolfgang is a little bit older, getting more alone time with each other. That's another question that I got. Like, how do you guys spend alone time together? We make it a priority to do a date night at least a couple of times a month, which seems like a lot. We used to never do them. Like earlier on in our marriage when I, we had like one or two kids, I think when we had a second kid, that's when we started like 
maybe once a month. And I say maybe, like a strong maybe, maybe once every other month. Like we don't have family. Okay, loaded question and I feel like I always pack in so much, but we don't have family that we can be like, okay, go hang out with grandma or go hang out with Aunt Susie for the weekend or even just the night, you know. If we have help, it's likely us hiring a babysitter, which is why we didn't go out at all the first several years that we had a child because we were scrimping and saving every penny. So not only is a date night expensive, like it can be expensive depending on where you go or what you do, that kind of thing. Obviously there are budget friendly ways to do it, but also if you hire a babysitter, like that costs a lot of money. But earlier on in the marriage, we decided that it needed to be a priority because having small kids takes a lot out of us and we need to reconnect. So that's what we do. And now we probably do it twice a month. The secret is just love each other. Okay. Just, you gotta just love each other. It's just Alex and I love each other so much, you know? This one's random. Do you do Disney every year? No, we used to do it once every three years. And I think the first time we went, I don't know. I don't know how to, we've only really been like a handful of times since we've had children, maybe four times. This past time, like I say four times, when we buy tickets, we buy bulk tickets. So we go more than one time, but it's like that year. Do you know what I mean? It's hard to explain. I think the first time we went, Avelina was four. She had to have been around that age. And then three years later, we went again. And then three years later, we went again, maybe. It may be four years later, because like, when was the pandemic? Last year was the first time we went in several years. Short story long, we don't go every year. If we go this year, which I don't think we are going to, but you guys know I've been like, obsessing over Disney and like, oh, we should probably go. And like Meredith loves it. We went last year and it was just so magical. I don't, we haven't bought tickets. So, you know, it's all up in the air. If we do, it'll be a, as big of a surprise to me as it is to, if we go, I'm gonna vlog it. I have to, right? You know what I really enjoy doing is in the mornings when I'm making breakfast or the kids are running amok, whatever, sometimes I'll throw on the TV a ride along. The kids really like Mickey and Minnie's Railroad Adventure, that one. I mean, it's amazing. No one's talking, it's literally just like a video of you getting on the ride, enjoying the ride, and then getting off. And then sometimes, I don't know what the channel names are because I do it on the TV, so I, I don't really see them. But there's one where the guy literally just like, I don't know if he's got a GoPro on, hat, chest, but he just walks through the park. He doesn't talk. You just get to enjoy walking through Disney. And sometimes I'm like, this is really nice. It's like watching a football game on TV rather than being in the stadium sweating in the stands. Like sometimes it's nice to go to a football game, but sometimes you're like, oh, it's 110 degrees outside. Um, I'd rather watch it on the TV, you know? And that's what Disney is like. 120 degrees outside sweating in the Florida humidity. Oh, this one's so long and so small. When are you going to realize? I don't know why I squint my eyes. I talk like a 110 year old woman. Oh my gosh, you guys are, you are the woman across the room. Erin, you're so nice. Thank you so much. I feel like you guys are the woman across the room. You inspire me to be better every day. I'm just over here doing my best. I feel like I'm living in chaos and sharing that with you and then listening to you guys be like, the same thing is happening to me and like, See, we're all living the same life over here. So that's really nice. Do you ever think about getting a pet? Uh, my kids do just about every other day when they beg us to get a pet. Uh, currently, their obsession is, oh my gosh, a watercress dog or some kind of water something. Uh, you know the dog from How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days? That, Kroll, the Warrior King. I said I will only agree to getting one. One, if we name it Kroll, the Warrior King. <laughs> And uh, two, I just won't agree on it. Listen, I have so many kids. I'm like, you wanna add on a pet on top of it? I don't, having a pet is a lot of work. It's a, if you have a pet, you know it's a lot of work. Um, thankfully, <laughs> we have a lot of pet allergies in the house. And so that makes it a lot easier for me to be like, oh, sorry. <laughs> but don't you worry about a thing because Alex and uh, the kids are really into Googling allergy friendly pets mostly dogs that are allergy free or allergen free. I don't know how it's phrased. And there are a lot of them. And we almost, we were like this close to getting one, one time. And then we didn't. And I'm like, oh, I'm real glad that we did. It was a smaller dog. And like, what am I gonna do? Let them out in the yard to go to the bathroom to have a hawk come down and pick it up? We can't get a super small dog. Speaking of, I got questions about like the wildlife that we have, the owls, there's owls. We've had families of owls back here. We heard them last night. We just love listening to them. Wolfgang in his sleep, he was talking in his sleep, it, which is like my favorite thing. He hardly ever does it. The bigger kids do it sometimes. 
but then they like grow out of it, you know? Or maybe, I, I mean, I'm not next to them, so I don't know, maybe they still do it. But he said, ow, ow. <laughs> It was so cute. I was like, yeah, we were talking to the owls. Anyway, the chickens, um, yeah, we have gone down in the number of chickens that we have, but actually that number is about to go up because we have friends who got chicken, who got chicks, but they don't have a yard to put them in. So they were kind of like, hey, when they get older, can we bring them to your coop? And we were like, yeah. So it's working out. We have had a predator come uh, in the form of a raccoon and we watched it. We know it was a raccoon because, well, I didn't watch it. Alex watched it because I don't want to see that, but like it was really sad. So the raccoon got a couple, sadly. So our number of chickens have dwindled, but they might be going back up again. I got this one a lot in different forms. Do you plan on having more kids? Was that your last kid? Is the sixth kid on the way? I assume these questions are from people who haven't been around during my last pregnancy when I constantly told you it was our fifth and final. I'm done. Uh, close up shop, no thank you, I'm done. I have enough, like the, okay, so many reasons why that is our last child. Uh, one, do you have five kids? Cause it's a lot. Not only just to spend time quality time with each of them, very time consuming. Kids cost a lot of money. I don't know how people do it with more than five. I'm like, do you have outside help? And then also we thought, because typically the way my body works, we have a child like every three years. Well, if we had another one, we'd have a 16 year age gap. And then it's like, we started doing the math. How old is Avelina going to be when she's married? And like, how old is our youngest going to be? You know what I mean? Like just typically if she gets, you know, if she's 25 years old or 30 years old, like if she starts having kids younger like us, early twenties, mid twenties, even in the thirties. And we just, we were like, you know what? We're good with five. Also, pregnancy is just, it's too hard on my body. It is, it's too hard. I get HG every single time. I think the last time I tried to convince myself that I didn't have HG, I was like, oh, you're fine. I was not fine, not even a little bit. HG is just very extreme morning sickness, but it's, that's not even a good way to explain it. Like some days I couldn't even stand up. I would get so dizzy that I just, it's so much worse than you can even envision. If you've had HG, you know, <laughs> you know, you're like, oh my gosh, it was the worst. And to have it five times, it's all worth it in the end. Listen, oh my gosh, I would do it five times more if it brought me my five children again, but I don't want to do it again. And you can't make me. We're very happy with our five kids. And I never understood it before when people were like, oh, our family feels complete. When you know, you know, because I never had that feeling until I was pregnant with our fifth. And I was like, this is it. <laughs> what does your average day look like? Chaos, straight up. Did you get a goat? Did I talk about getting a goat? Maybe I mentioned it in passing like, oh, wouldn't it be cool? Okay, so here's the goat story. Short story long, here we go. Our neighbors, like not close to us, but like down the road, they were moving and they have a bunch of goats. Our kids always went there, like we would always go there to feed the goats and it was like a nice little outing. We've got goats and then down the road a little bit we have cows, so sometimes we feed the cows, horses, whatever. They were moving and they asked if we wanted a goat and you know, I don't know, they'll protect the chickens and like, Part of me is thinking, well, we have predators. Maybe we they need some more protection. But a goat is another thing to take care of. Goats are like real messy. Uh, do we even like goat's milk? Is like, can I cook enough things with goat's milk to make it worth it? What's the lifespan of a goat? Like so many questions, right? And now I'm remembering because I had all of those questions before. I'm, was I singing Alanis Morissette in the laundry room the same day? It's all coming back. It's all coming back to me now. It might not have been the same day, but I will say we did not get a goat because then we started looking and Alex is like, oh my gosh, look at these miniature goats. They look so much cuter. And then the kids started looking at the mini goats and saying, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we got the mini goats? So then Alex started looking into the mini goats. I'm telling you, it's a short story long, but it's worth it. So Alex on Facebook, looking for a mini goat. He just wants maybe one or two. I think he was looking for two so they could like, you know, have a buddy to play with. Started going on Facebook groups. Hey, I'd love to get a mini goat. Like one do you deliver, one, can I pick up, can I see where they're coming from, blah, 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 right? All these places, well obviously it happened one at a time, 
but he would go find these people who were selling mini goats and they were all like Alex just got a weird vibe from them they would all ask for a deposit and he'd be like oh can I come and see them before I give you the deposit or I can come pick them up like it's no big deal can I talk to you on the phone and like none of them could talk on the phone I like he's been through I don't at least 10 different goat Facebook people who were trying to sell mini goats specifically and when I say 10 I mean that's probably lowball he's probably done way more than that it's been months since he's been on this mini goat excursion and so none of them would talk on the phone and several of them would send them videos because he's like how do I know you're real like can I talk to you on the phone right easy way to do it or even FaceTime even just a phone call I'm such a millennial with this kind of phone. This is how the Gen Z does it these days. I digress. None of them could talk on the phone and some of them sent him videos of a random person being like, see, here I am, I'm real. But he knows that it was like they paid someone to just do that, you know? Apparently, there is a huge mini goat scamming market. They are all just trying to scam us out of like a $200 deposit or something random. Like, who knew that there would be an underground mini goat scam business? Like, who knew that was such a big thing? But he is unable to find, so if you, do you sell mini goats? Can can we have a mini go? Such a random thing, right? Someone said, you secretly love pizza and then gave me a wink. I secretly think I hate pizza, but I grit and bear it because it is an easy dinner that everyone else enjoys. And I secretly hate spaghetti, but I grin and bear it because it's one of the only things Alex knows how to make and it's super simple and easy and everyone else enjoys it. I will enjoy pizza. I think it's the red sauce. I think it just does something to me and I just know better. I'm like, mm, don't really enjoy it. But I do like the barbecue pizza. It's barbecue, chicken, bacon, pineapple. Don't come for me. I don't care. It's the best thing I've ever had. Jalapenos, cheese. I know there's gotta be other things on that. Onion. It's so good. One of the best pizzas I've ever had. And I will say we went to Feces the other day, you guys know, because I talked about it in a video. And actually this morning, Meredith asked to go back there. Can we go to the pizza place with games? We were like, yeah, Chuck E. Cheese. And she's like, no, not Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Feces. Yeah, I guess she loved it so much. Anyway, they have a taco pizza that I really enjoy. But again, not the red sauce. It's like some kind of taco sauce. So I do enjoy that. And I will have a good pizza roll, which also is without red sauce. So, uh, you know, take that for what you will. What's your favorite pizza? Maybe I'll make it. Oh, we're gonna have a pizza night soon. Oh, I do love a good homemade pizza. And I will say, I think it was last year when I tried to buy, well, I didn't try to, I bought Alex a pizza oven from Target. It was on clearance, but it's still like a hundred and something dollars. Anyway, we tried to set it up out here, but it just, it was really weird and you had to like hook it up to propane and there was like no safe place to put it. It was bizarre, which I assume is why it was on clearance and someone else returned it. But anyway, I do like a good pizza and like a fresh pizza and a pizza oven, like a good pizza, you know, like New York style pizza. I will eat pizza if it's being served. I'm not going to be rude. Uh, it's also just not my favorite food. I'm not sure I have a favorite food, but if I had to pick one, that wouldn't be it. Oh my gosh, someone asked me, what is your death row meal? I can't find it, but I read it earlier and I was like, that's kind of dark. I'm not sure I have one. Maybe like rum balls. Can, can they get a dessert too? I don't even know the rules. Rum balls would be on there. Brownies, cake. Does it have to be nutritious? I got questions. You know what I had the other day that I'm like, ooh, I need to make that again. The shrimp kebabs that my friend made at the beach house and she put this like stuff on it. Ooh, Oreo balls too. Can we make Oreo balls again? She put this stuff on it because I asked her, oh my gosh, what's the marinade? It's so good, I have to make this. And she was like, oh, that ranch seafood stuff. So simple, already comes in a bottle. It could, it doesn't get easier than that, but it had such great flavor, a little kick at the end. And I was like, I am making that. So maybe next time I go grocery shopping and make a meal plan, I need to get my life together. You can't see, but the luggage is still over here, unpacked, it's fine. I'll get to it another day. <laughs> Loved your transformation of Wolfgang's room. Thank you so much. Are you planning to tackle the girls room soon? Oh my gosh, so weird. Okay, the next question, hopefully I don't scroll past it, but it's, it's like two people who asked almost the identical thing. Okay, what was what did I just ask? <laughs> oh, Wolfgang's room, uh, awesome, right? Isn't his room amazing? I love it so much. The next room, did you ask the next room? Oh, the girls room. 
I told them, I've told them for months, can you guys put together a list of things that you want? Like, I can decorate their room, I can buy them a rug, I can get them curtains, I can get them artwork for their wall, but I don't know if they're gonna love it. So I keep asking them, put together a list, like Eleanor still needs a headboard. I could buy you a headboard, but I don't know which one that you like. And I've sat down with them like, here's Pinterest. Which ones? Like come up with a vision board so we can get the wheels rolling along so your room looks finished. And so hopefully sometime this summer we get to it. Wentworth's room is actually the next that we want to tackle. His bed finally came in. It was on back order or back. I don't know. We, we ordered it in February. It finally came in. That's going to be a huge weekend project to just put that thing together. It is one of the like high beds it's like a bunk bed but the bottom is like a desk area he's really pumped for it he wants more space in his room uh so we're gonna get rid of the full bed that he has which i guess is kind of grown up but i love it he's over it so i think he's gonna really like it but again i don't know what to do with the rest of his room I'm like do you want me to put your costumes up here like superman style all of your marvel characters like you tell me. So that will be a trip to the lobby. And by lobby, I mean the lob. Hobby lob. Do you ever miss the old house? And then someone else wrote, how's your old house? Do you still rent it out? Do you ever check in on it? Yes. What toys do you have for Wolfgang? What does he play with? Isn't it funny? Uh, listen, babies play with literally anything. Most fun toy are kitchen utensils and like just random stuff he finds around the house. He has so many toys. Uh, we have a ton of toys upstairs, which they were playing with upstairs this morning without me. I was like, is this the next phase of life? Is this what this is like? I know I'm not even talking about the old house, but I got sidetracked and I started reading the next question that's down below. Nice to meet you. My name is Kimberly Whisk and this is just how we roll. Toys, season of life. He played by himself this morning when just yesterday morning he was so attached to me, I couldn't put him down to use the bathroom, which is how most of our mornings are. I'm like rolling out of bed, caretaker already. My eyes aren't even open. You know what I mean? Like that's how I'm used to it. Literally like I either have to hold him while I'm going to the bathroom or like put him down and listen to him like fuss about. <laughs> Like, I love you so much, dude, but just let me go pee for like 30 seconds, maybe. I'll push it, like maybe 20 seconds. I got a turbo speed on there, maybe 15. I'll cut it off and then finish later. Okay, too much. So anyway, they played upstairs and I just watched them from downstairs and I was like, I didn't even know what to do. I mean, I had plenty of stuff to keep me busy and to do, but I just sat there for a second. I was like, is this what it's going to be like to not be me? And then of course, like, Five seconds later, it was mom, and I was like, oh, cool. But just for a split second, and I had a thought of that too when we were at the beach house this past week. Every morning when the kids woke up, the little ones, I would get them fed and then take them down to the beach and we would just enjoy our time, play, whatever, collect shells, whatever we would do, right? And there was always this group, not a group, but two or three older ladies there who would like, oh, good morning, and oh, they're so cute, or whatever. But they would be just be sitting there for hours, just enjoying their life on the beach, right? And I just had this thought. I was holding Wolfgang, walking back up to the room. We were done for the morning, you know, ready for to actually get dressed in our bathing suit and stuff. Holding Meredith's hand, walking back up to the room, and I had just had a thought. I was like, one day, I'm not going to be, you know, holding a baby and holding Meredith's hand. Because my older kids, like, they sleep in, and they're just running amok on the beach. Like, they're going to the pool, they're going to the beach, and they're, you know, doing their own thing. They're older, they can do that. And I was just like, one day, pros and cons, it's bittersweet, but I had that thought and I was like, oh my gosh, like sadness, but also I'm ready for that. <laughs> Lots of emotions. Okay, the other house that we own, yes, we rent it out. Uh, and I will say less than the other people who are renting out houses in our community. We're not trying to like price gouge our renters and push it up just because we have to. We make hardly any money, if anything at all after like you know insurance and mortgage and stuff like that property insurance you know just the stuff but anyway actually the pool pump just went out so that was a good old time <laughs> alex deals with most of that but we do have renters in there they're the same renters that we found when we moved they're a super sweet family they're great alex goes there once a year when they renew their lease 
and just to inspect everything, make sure everything is doing okay and like, you know, you gotta just check up on things, right? What kind of knife do you use? Oh gosh, what's it called? Cutco. They're amazing. They were gifted to me by a friend and I can't even believe, I put them in my closet for so long in my pantry after they were gifted to me and I didn't wanna use them because I know how expensive they are and I know how nice they are and I just, I don't know, I didn't want to ruin them and I kind of didn't feel worthy of using them and I was like, oh my God, they're too nice. Like they're too nice for me. Like maybe later, I don't know. But use your nice things while you're here on earth to enjoy them. So I took them down and I love them so much. They're amazing. They're incredible. I love them. Meeson, I also have Meeson, a couple of those knives and they're fantastic as well. One of them could use a sharpen. <gasps> Did I bring it home from the beach house? I hope so. They're great, but those are like the two brands names. And then I have like some pairing knives that I use that I just got from like Home Goods one time that are cute, but not the sharpest. Oh, I love your house. That's so nice of you to say. Thank you. We love our house too. All, literally every day, we're like so grateful. Alex and I have the conversation often about how lucky we are to live here, how amazing it is our view like are you joking is this our life we're so lucky the kids that we have so many comments i get often like oh your kids are so lucky to have you as parents we're lucky to have them our kids are incredible they're amazing i love them so they surprise me every day i'm like you're my child what a delight what a delight i mean listen it's not all rainbows and sunshine over here we got five kids and their ages are one to 13. So we've got a lot happening, but it's also a lot of fun and a lot of good times. And man, are we lucky to have our kids. When are you coming to Europe? Do you have a place for us to stay? I wanna go to Europe so bad. And what's funny is I was just talking, ah, I need a pillow for my feet. I've been sitting on my feet and my bones are hurting. The tops of my feet are red. They're kind of falling on. I should have had a pillow to begin with. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, Europe, wanna go? I feel like everyone's going to Europe these days. Like what? Of course it's amazing over there. If you don't know, Alex and I used to live in Europe for a few years. He was in the military, so we were actually stationed in Italy. And it was so amazing and incredible. We also didn't have kids then, but we always thought when we have kids, we need to come back. And I, it's like, it's a hard balance because Avelina is of the age where like, we need to show her the world. We need to, you know, show her some culture and bring her different places. And so we try to do what we can with her, but then we also have a one-year-old and like, it's not easy to travel with a one-year-old. And I mean, I'm sure people do it all the time, but like, it's not fun. Come on, be real. I just went to the beach and I'm like, oh my God. This was me patting his back, trying to calm him down. Trying to calm myself down most of the time. I really want to go. I'm trying to talk Alex into it. Not that it needs much talking into because he would love to go just as much as I would. I don't know where we would go. Maybe Germany. Like that's what I'm thinking because like Germany is amazing and awesome and people are really cool and kind. Not that people aren't kind and cool elsewhere. I'm talking about France. I'm looking at you. In general, I think French people don't really love Americans, which is fine. I don't mean to generalize, I'm just making a joke. Anyway, uh, I don't know when it's going to happen, but I hope soon. Soon is subjective. I don't know when, probably never. Advice for the teenage years, not ready for the eye rolls and the mood swings. Ooh, okay, I have so much to say about this. I'm glad you asked. Advice for the teenage years. Okay, so I left a comment on a reel that I saw. Hold on, let me even see if I can pull it up here. Here it is, I'll show you the reel. to another mom and she has teenagers and I told her, oh man, I'm so tired. Like they wake up at weird hours and it's hard keeping up with them when they're so little. And she was like, oh, you're always gonna be tired. It doesn't get easier. <laughs> can, can you lie? Can you lie to me and tell me it does get a little easier? <laughs> Thank you. Lovely, right? She seems like a lovely gal. Just in the thick of it with little ones, like, oh my gosh. Because here's the thing, when you have little ones, you are a caregiver. Like they're constantly needing from you all the time. I told you, hardest years are from their first three years of life. Like hardest, most needed. I think you know what I'm getting at. Obviously there are challenges 
during every phase of motherhood. But anyway, so I responded with a comment. She did lie. It gets a ton easier. Babies and toddlers are demanding, constantly needing to be cared for. As they get older, they become more independent. It gets easier, more hands off, and they start to sleep better. It gets easier. That was my comment. And then someone who doesn't even follow me responded, I can't wait to see this not age well. You barely have a teenager. Like what? So I responded to her, but it's just like, oh my gosh, moms just wanna like crap on each other and be like, oh, just wait, just wait. Yeah, just wait, because there are great parts too. Like, yeah, there are challenges with every stage, it gets harder and it gets easier. But for me, like even in seventh grade, I feel like I had this conversation with you. I talked to a ton of other moms and they were under the consensus, like a group of moms were like, oh, you lose your child in seventh grade to, you know, hormones and they're moody and all this stuff. I cannot even express to you, like, yes, I've had to deal with a little bit of that. But my oldest, who is going into eighth grade now, which by the way, they all said, don't worry, they come back to you in eighth grade. And now I'm kind of worried because I didn't lose her in seventh grade. If anything, I felt like the older she gets, the more I love her, the more I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so, you're the best, you know? There are like different phases of like different challenges and you know, the dramas that you have to work through and talk through and teach and you know, different things. But in general, the n older they get, I'm like, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. I can't remember your question. I can't find it anymore. It was something along the lines of being worried about the mood swings and the eye rolls. Like they're going to happen. I'm in my late 30s, <laughs> mid 30s, I don't know. And sometimes I get moody and I get eye rolly and you know what I mean? Like that's just part of being a human being and having a ton of emotions. Just like, you know, it's gonna be great. And when it's not great, just know that that won't last forever. Hopefully, right? Because what do I know? I only have a 13 year old. I just love that. She's like, I can't wait for this to not age well. Like you can't wait to see me struggle rather than giving me validation. Like that's what that mom was literally begging for. Please tell me it gets easier. So I'm like validating her. She's begging for it. Like, yes, tell her the good parts. It's not all bad. Who's your favorite kid? LOL, depends on the day. Do you let your watermelon sit for a few days before you cut them? No. I mean, so, no, maybe, I don't think so, no. First baby advice for labor slash postpartum. Prepare more for postpartum than for labor. Labor lasts a day, po like once you have the baby, that's when the journey really begins. That's it for me, the postpartum is like the hardest part. So make meals for yourself ahead of time. That's like my biggest piece of advice. If you're having a baby, you're gonna be hungry. You need to feed yourself and you're not gonna wanna cook because your body is broken and needs to heal. So make sure you have food. That's my number one tip of advice. And then just try to, like it goes by so fast. It doesn't feel that way when you're literally in the thick of it, just rocking them at, you know, at 2 a.m. Like, oh my gosh, why won't they sleep? Why are they crying? Why am I crying? <laughs> so many emotions. It feels like I mean, listen, it depends on your baby's temperament too because I've had babies that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I could do this 700 more times. And then I've had babies who I'm like, has it been 700 hours since I have slept? So like pros and cons and I hope, uh, cheers, I hope you got a good one, okay? I also hear moms who are like, my baby slept through the night when they were two days old. Like, oh, that's so awesome. Not to brag, but like, mine started sleeping through the night at two years old. <laughs> Just know that Every baby is different. Every mom is different. Every mom is right. You'll find your own way. Take advice or leave advice. Like it's up to you at the end of the day. Samantha said, I've been on the Velcro baby train with you. Solidarity, sister. It ain't easy. Someone's at my front door. Be right back. I'm back. It was a bug guy. Hey, you know what's cool? I saw two cardinals together yesterday. I was like tidying up the backyard. It was magical. I just saw one just now. <laughs> Stop eating out of the spoon and putting it back in the pot and feed everyone. I feel like normally I lick the spoon at the end. I feel like if I'm like literally, am I taking a bite? Am I licking batter? I feel like I lick batter off my finger. If I eat out of the spoon, it's like a normal spoon. I don't normally eat out of like a mixing spoon. I don't know what you're talking about, girl, you crazy. Yeah, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know. Oh wow, you really asked that? I saw it again, do you ever miss the old house? I don't think I touched on that aspect of it. Um, no. 
I don't miss the old house. So there it is. Advice for growing on YouTube, consistency. Be consistent, continue to do it. Don't give up, don't give, keep going. That's the biggest tip I could give you. And also make content that you would enjoy watching. If you could move anywhere, where would it be? Uh, I don't know. I love like Washington state, like the dreariness of it, or I don't know, even just a cooler climate in general, because summer times in Florida are just so miserable. But the more I talk to people, they're like, oh, we moved down here because we lived in XYZ and you know, several months throughout the year, it's just so dreary. And I don't know, like when we lived in Europe, we had the all four seasons and I really enjoyed that. But again, I didn't have kids. So it wasn't like, oh, I've got a bunch of kids and I'm trapped in the house. Like we have one rainy day and it's not as if it even rains all day and they can still play in the morning or in the evening outside, you know? So I really think like Florida is one of the best places to live, but don't move here. Oh my gosh. I saw, I see often like top growing place, states to move in 2020, whatever. And it's like Florida, like 11 out of the 15 are in Florida. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's so crowded in Tampa specifically, but it's awesome here. And it's the sunshine state, you know, got this a lot. What does Alex do for a living? I know he was in the air force and then he was doing his master's degree. So right now he is working on building a pickleball expo. He's working real hard on that. He's gone probably three days a week at least. And then, you know, trying to work on the phone the other days. He actually just took a trip to Las Vegas to another pickleball expo. And so that keeps him really busy. He has a business partner that he meets with, you know, three days a week and he's just really into it. I think you guys know he loves pickleball. He picked it up, uh, a little bit before the baby was born and he like quickly became obsessed with it. And I think like pickleball in general has kind of taken on a life of its own lately in the past like year, year and a half. Like I feel like everyone's talking about it. So that's what he's really into. And his expo will be in the fall of 2025. If you wanna come, hit him up. He'll be really happy to share all of the details with you. What do you do in your downtime? What? You get downtime? I just told you I had to get rid of Hulu. Like that was our downtime. Alex and I tried to watch something the other day. I can't even remember what it was. He, I mean, listen, I have cinema narcolepsy. So like we'll hang out and then we'll try to turn a movie on and I will pass out like before the beginning credits are over. If you turn the lights off and turn a movie on, my body's like, oh, good night. I try my best. There was a movie that we watched. It took us probably four weeks to finish one movie. <laughs> like that's how much time we would get at the end of the night. Ah! It's a good time. Are there travel plans to Hershey Park this year? Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be amazing? There's not. I love Hershey Park. I love Chocolate World. I love Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I love the Amish town, Pennsylvania. My kids specifically like a park up there. It's, we call it the Castle Park. It's in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. They talk about it more. They ask to go there. I'm like, sorry, dude, I just, it's too far away. <laughs> but hopefully soon, the two girls actually, the two older girls took a trip there earlier this year to visit my mom and my grandmother. And my grandmother's actually, oh my gosh, turning 90 next year, which is so wild. She seems so much younger than that, but we really do need to take another trip up there. The thing is, it's so expensive. Flight, because I'm not driving again. We drove with young kids. I would rather not. And so the flight and then the rental car when we get there, because there's so many of us, we can't just rely on like our family who lives up there to, there's just too many of them. We don't fit in any of their cars. And then we don't want to put anyone out. So we would do like Airbnb kind of thing. And those are expensive. You know what we need to find? A nice Amish family that will host us. I think that would be amazing. Uh, will be kind of hard to do that since they don't use the internet, but you know what? My cousin lives near the Amish and maybe she can pull some strings. <gasps> what do you use on your skin? It looks so soft and flawless. Thank you so much. You know what it is? Uh, lighting, I think. Like it does, let me show you how flawless my skin is. I, I get pimples all the time. And I say it should be a crime to get pimples and wrinkles at the same time. It should be against the law. Who agreed to that? The hormonal acne 
can we not with the wrinkles give me a break but that's actually really nice that you said that and you know what i have gotten a few compliments on my skin like oh you have really nice skin i'm like what i think i was picking up one of my kids from their friend's houses and the security guard you know i had to like give him my id and he was like oh my gosh your skin i was like what me are you even looking my bad side i think people are just really nice like i but also we have our own insecurities right and i don't wear foundation i will say that i don't i use concealer and eye uh mascara and eyebrow and then like chapstick on my lips and that's it you know whose skin is the best um eleanor She's got those freckles and I'm like, oh my gosh, never grow out of them. I love them so much. She's 10, she'll be 11 in November. And I'm like, ah, oh, her freckles are literally the sweetest. Two out of the five of my kids have freckles and I just hope that they have them for the rest of their life. They're so darling, aren't they? I love them so much. And you know, when I see other women, I'm like, oh, their skin is so amazing. Or, oh my gosh, they have like that natural, like it does, it's not flawless, it's not perfect, but they have that natural, like I'm a mom. And somehow, even after 13 years, I still don't even, so sometimes I look at myself and I'm like, that's a mom outfit. I feel like a mom today. But most of the time I look at myself, I'm like, oh, is this motherly behavior? <laughs> I'm still going through an identity crisis, I feel like. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes, of course. Would you all ever move again? Ooh, wow, good question. I don't know. And I actually think about it all the time. I don't know. We love this place so much, but there are also things that we don't love about it. Pros and cons to literally everything in life. It's lovely to live here. It is a dream. We love it. No plans to move for the foreseeable future. Mm, now that the addition is done, great segue. What is your next big home project? Pool? Uh, yeah, okay, so, I, was it last summer that we thought, oh, wouldn't it be great to have a pool? And then we had a couple of guys come out and like give us quotes for a pool. Uh, do you know how much uh, getting a pool is? Obviously ours is like on the higher end because we want a pretty large pool. We have the space for a larger pool. We would want it to be like even with the rest of the outdoor space here. And then also on top of that, Alex like dreams big and he wants like a, um, a cliff with a grotto underneath. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And also a hot tub. He would want one of those. And I'm like, can, like, do we have to go from like zero to 1000? And so, uh, no plans for a pool because, uh, can I borrow money? It's so expensive. Maybe one day but uh not right now yeah it is uh it's it's mucho money i've gotten this question a few times so i'll answer it what jobs did you have uh before being a mom or a youtuber do you miss any of them that's interesting oh have you ever been to utah heck yeah salt lake city utah Woo -woo. we loved it there okay jobs i was a pharmacy tech before we moved to italy um before that i worked the beauty counter nice to meet you <laughs> I know, I know so much about makeup. I was the original makeup guru, Kimberly Beauty Blender. Uh, before that, I worked at an animal hospital. Very short amount of time, wasn't my thing, not for me. Uh, in high school, I worked at Publix. I also, ooh, one of my favorite jobs, I worked at a restaurant and I busted tables and can I tell you right now, when the restaurant closed down, that's when they fit everybody. And I was like, ooh, pasta at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, I gained about 15 pounds while working there and I was like, oh. But you know what? They had the best roles. I miss those roles. And then once we got married, um, we were living in a different country, obviously. So I volunteered, but didn't have like a job. Like I would go to the gelato shop. Like I volunteered a few times there. We sold books. I did that for a while. Back when Amazon sold books and it was called half.com, I would go to thrift stores and secondhand stores and try to find education books sold the best, obviously. And so I would find them really cheap and then sell them for a profit. So that was something that I did. And then while I started YouTube, I did placenta encapsulation, did that for several years until the pandemic hit. And I was like, ooh, the liability there. I don't know, I don't wanna like, you know. So I stopped doing that. I still get texts pretty regularly asking like, hey, you did it for me a while ago, will you do it again? Oh, okay, this question was, what shampoo and conditioner do you use? Whatever's in my shower, uh, okay, 
you guys saw, I think it was before Christmas, I bought myself some Christmas gifts or I don't know what it was. But really what I bought for myself was like shampoo and conditioner. Most of them didn't even work for me, so what a shame. The Amica stuff does not work on my hair. You know what I love? Biolage. I use that, I go back to it over and over again. It's really expensive, but I always get it when it's like buy one, get one half off at Ulta or whatever. And I don't use that much. So I find that a bottle lasts a pretty long time because I don't wash my hair every day. So that's what I use and I love it. But other than that, like I'll use Pantene Pro-V. Like it doesn't, whatever I have, I use, I buy that most often because it's the best price at Costco. Is Nicolas Cage your hall pass guy? Are you for real, for real? Do you really think he would be my hall pass guy? Two things. Alex and I, I don't, we don't have like a hall pass. Like what does that even, no. But if we did, it would not be Nicolas Cage, okay? Like Bruce Willis. I've gotten several questions about breastfeeding and weaning and what that looks like. A lot of women who are saying like, you know, mine's 13 months, mine's 23 months. Like what's the procedure here? I don't know what I'm going to do. So we extend breastfeed. Wolfgang is like a year and a half old. He still nurses quite, uh, like pretty, uh, I'm like, dude, you're like pretty big now. A lot of times it's just comfort. There is still milk that comes out though. I get that question too. So typically in the past, what I've done is like had another baby and then, oops, up the nursing is for the baby. And so that's just an easy way to end it. So with this one, I don't plan on having another baby unless Heavenly Father himself decides that that is a life for us, which um, please, no thank you. <laughs> but I think what I'm going to do is um, at his third birthday, I'll just say like that, I'm closing up, sorry. Happy birthday. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's going to look like, but with the other kids, there was never any pushback. There was never a moment where they wanted to do it again. I feel like Wolfgang will be a different story though. Any or an Audi, ooh, the questions. I think I have a little bit of both, but I try not to even look at my belly button. It doesn't look good. How do you do family dinner every night with so many kids and activities? Great question. We probably sit down together as a family six out of the seven days, if not all seven days. Like obviously there are some times where like the kids are out with their friends or you know doing an activity. For the majority of the time, we work it around their activities. So we'll have an early dinner if the kids have something later that night or we'll have a later dinner if the kids have like a game or something. But we just make it a priority. I don't know, it, like, you gotta eat dinner and uh, everyone's gotta eat. So we just try to do it all at the same time. But I'm sure as they get older, that will become more of a challenge as well. Specifically like when they start driving. But we hope that we've instilled that in them and they will come home to eat, hopefully. I mean, there have been studies done about families who sit down and eat together every night and how, you know what, I'll Google it right now. The benefit of family dinner, the, the woo, it says only about 30% of families regularly eat dinner together. Hold on though, there are benefits. Okay, LOL, family dinners relieve stress. This must be written by someone who doesn't have a bunch of kids slash babies. Sometimes it is stressful, like the baby's throwing food or the baby's crying because he's tired, but as he's getting older, it is becoming a little easier. Uh, he knows that like, ooh, this is his time to eat. And leading up to it too, I'm like, I'm cooking dinner and like he's hungry then, so he wants to eat and it's whatever. We make it work and um, eating together builds meaningful bonds. Uh, that's one of the benefits. Builds sensible eating habits. I guess that depends on what you're eating. It improves communication skills. That's great. Good for family bonding, healthier families, healthier meals, improved academic performance. That's interesting. Communication, lower risk of depression, saves money. It does save money unless you're ordering out to eat together. <laughs> the price of fast food these days, ooh, it increases self-esteem and resiliency in children and teens and decreases their risk of depression. That's really interesting. I actually didn't know that. It provides a time to be connected. Okay, I've gotten a few questions about like, we put so much energy and effort into our children's memories and making a great childhood for them. Listen, Alex and I are just a couple of millennial parents. As kids, we craved for our parents' attention and now that we're parents, I think maybe we overcompensate and maybe do too much for our kids. I mean, honestly, pros and cons. But we do do a lot for our children and, you know, I read a quote maybe a year ago and it was like, 
you as a parent, you're in control of your child's childhood. Like their childhood is in our hands. We're creating it. And then I saw something else like not too long ago and it was the perspective of the child versus the perspective of the parent and like just whatever you're whatever you're doing on a daily basis and it was like oh we made cookies together today and the parents perspective was like oh my gosh i got a huge mess to clean up because the kids are making cookies you know what i mean so it's like that's their childhood or like oh you know i played dinosaurs with mom on the floor today and it's like the mom literally exhausted like trying to just lay down and the kids are like playing dinosaurs around her and i was like that like it's such the perfect dichotomy of like a parent versus a child and their perspective and i just thought that was so interesting okay i'm gonna do a few rapid fire questions this normally doesn't end with actual rapid fire but i'm gonna do my best do you do all of your own editing yes i do this may be dumb but did you actually go to cordon blue or is that a gag you use yes of course i went to cordon blue I actually went with Julia Child, same time. Do your kids have any American Girl dolls? We have like the fake American Girl dolls. My kids love, well, I, my kids did love them, but now Meredith is getting into them. She loves them. Can you do a meetup in Orlando? Just always seems so bizarre. Maybe when I'm in Orlando, I'll run into you. How about that? What is your family motto or words of wisdom you try to live by? Ooh, probably do your best. Like I'm just doing my best. And my kids take that over like I'm doing the best I can. And I'm like, I'm right on top of that, Rose. How do you deal with the stress of life? What's your outlet? I don't know. How tall are you really? <laughs> when will your next closet clean out be? Um, probably soon. I'm kind of dreading it. I actually don't know if I'm gonna film it. I don't know, I get weird about like, do I wanna show a declutter? Cause then people are like, oh, you just shopped a declutter. But really, I'm just in a state of like, still trying to figure out who I am. Half the clothes in my closet don't even fit me anymore. My body is like a yo-yo with like pregnancy and postpartum and going back and like back and forth. And ooh, maybe I'll wanna wear that next year. Or maybe I wore that a couple years ago and I loved it, but I don't love it now. I actually just wore a couple of outfits this past week at the beach that I have had in my closet for three years like I don't want to get rid of stuff but I also know that like I need to get rid of some even my sports bras I'm like I got like half of my bras don't even fit me anymore you know so like hashtag justified and plus I love thrifting and I'm saving the environment you know it's hard but like someone's got to do it next guest on my podcast make it interesting how are things on the homestead I plan to start canning soon it's really in my mind. I gotta get it. I gotta just do it. My daughter just came in. They saw Inside Out last night and um, she wants to go again with a couple of her friends, but they want to dress up like the character. Last night they dressed up as some of the characters, but loosely like they just wore the colors. Um, but they have new characters in Inside Out now. If you haven't seen the preview or whatever. So they have anxiety and embarrassment. There's a few others. Oh, I saw, oh my gosh, what was it? the old woman nostalgia i was like oh my gosh can we be them for halloween again no bing bong in this movie so sad how do you plan your days parties shopping days gym vacation i want to know how you split tasks oh um i don't know we just do it baby i have not been to the gym since summer started it's actually sad i don't want to talk about it what were we talking about before that i've been to the gym and it's breaking my achy breaky heart that's like my me time. That's like the, and you know what else? Scrapbooking is like, I love scrapbooking. Two years behind, maybe more than that. Maybe three at this point. Um, I really need to, I want to and need to, and uh, maybe tomorrow I will. What are your pet peeves? Oh, that's real good. Stepping on something wet when you have socks on. People who chew too loud. Uh, being late places, ooh, that bothers me. But if people are late to, like, I don't mind if people are late, but if I'm late somewhere, and it also depends on what it is, like being late to school specifically. The Costco parking lot in general. <laughs> uh, I probably have a lot, but I just can't really think of any. I love this one, someone said, have you ever been to Canada? Someone said you must have been Canadian because you knew some of our anthem. <laughs> I am Canadian. Oh, and I do love the national anthem. Okay, I wasn't going to talk about this, but someone left a comment and it won't let me leave a response to her. It seems to be like glitching. Uh, so, okay, it, about Tina, like how are you doing since your sister passed? My sister passed a couple of years ago and this person specifically was like, oh, it doesn't seem to affect you too much. 
Well, of course I'm not going to come on here and be like, oh my gosh, you know, and spew on and on about it. Um, it affects us every day. She was actually the closest sibling that I had. Like she made an effort to spend time with us. She'd like pop in every once in a while. She would take my kids. She was the closest aunt to my children spent time with them, went above and beyond for them. Really the only family member on both of our sides to do that for our kids. And then not just that, me growing up, she was 15 years older than me. And so I just, she did so much for me. She never made me feel left out. She always included me. If she was like going to the ice cream shop with her friends that were also 15 years old, she'd be like, hey Kim, wanna come? Hey Kim, wanna spend the night at my apartment with me? Hey Kim, wanna, do, wanna go to the beach today? Like, for no other reason. Some siblings, ha, you know, have younger siblings. Oh, that's my younger sibling. That's how my closest sister is growing up. Oh, that's my sister. Do you know what I mean? Tina always included me. And so it's just, I think that comment rubbed me the wrong way. Like, it doesn't seem to affect you. It affects me more than I could even explain to you. One of her sons still lives down here. We have him over at least once a week. Her other two children live uh, in a different state. And so we don't get to see them often. And that breaks my achy breaky heart. When I say things like take the trip, use the things, live life, because you never know what's going to happen. That's who I'm thinking of. Like, but that was her mentality about everything. Like we told her about the house. And, she, and you know, I had qualms. I was like, oh, I don't know, it's out of our price range. Like, oh, should we do it? She's like, are you kidding me? Of course, like do it. That was her personality. She lived every day. She like, everything was a party. Oh my gosh, like that, she lived out loud. And so if I can do a little bit of that, I miss her. I miss that my children don't get to have a relationship with her anymore. I miss that her kids don't get to have a relationship with her anymore. Loss is so hard especially when it's someone that you're close to. Alex and I miss her a lot. And her one year anniversary of her passing was right when Wolfgang was born. And so that was specifically a very hard time. Well, we can't end it there. Have you made any real life friends from your YouTube social media? Yes, I have. So cool. Do you speak French? Oui! Je suis contente de voir. Comment va tu? If that's miserable, don't come for me. I took French for many years and hardly know anything. Same with German. I wish I knew a second language. I should really dedicate the time to do that, but you guys, I can't even scrapbook. I can't even watch Grey's Anatomy. Not that I would want to. What season are they on? A hundred? Okay, that is it. I feel like I've been sitting here for way too long. Is it back to school time already? What year is it? What month is it? Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out. It really means a lot. Thank you for being a friend and all that good stuff, and I will see you next time. Bye.